Good morning, my name is Ryan Hefner. I'm a design engineer at Aquilabar. Today, I'll be showing you our Aquilabar Supercritical Extraction Setup, which highlights our newest piece of technology, the BR1, which stands for a Blockage Resistant Regulator. In this case, it is platformed from our research series and has a couple different design features that eliminate the historic freezing problem that most control valves have. The first is this expanding orifice area, which sheds ice as flow moves through it into this ring here, which is, can be thought of as a thermal mass as well as an expansion area. From there, you can bolt up several different types of connections for outlet parameters like a flange, tube stub, etc. We have a couple different options, which I'll show you later. The setup we have today is a CO2 tank, which goes to our Haskell pneumatic pump, which is operated by Shop Air. From the Haskell pump, we go to our vessel here, which has some basil in it, which we'll try and extract some oils from in a bit. From the vessel, we go to our flow controller valve, which leads to the Wyka pressure transducer. This Wyka pressure transducer monitors the inlet pressure of the back pressure regulator. And also, we have a junction here where we have a high pressure water pump that will be pumping water through this regulator. What that'll do is it'll simulate a ton of ice buildup in the regulator, and you can actually see the ice being shed away from the regulator during operation. So now that you've been outside, I'll take you inside and explain our setup in more of a visual way. So to start, we have our CO2 source pump, which has a siphon tube that draws liquid carbon dioxide from the bottom of the tank, goes to our Haskell pump, which has a 25 to 1 ratio in which we plan to output the pump at around 2,000 PSI. This goes to our vessel, and the vessel is important because in our particular setup, we need a volume damper to absorb some of that impact from the Haskell operating. However, in this case, the vessel could be anything that you're trying to control or, or extract. So if you have some uh, organic matter in there and you want to extract the oils that way, this vessel is exactly where you need to be. From there, we have a flow controlling valve. And in this particular setup, the Haskell pump and the Equilibar are both generate pressure. In this case, the Equilibar generates pressure in the inlet and the Haskell is on the outlet. So you need some DP device to have constant flow throughout the system. So that's what our flow controlling valve does. But again, in your particular setup, it could be different. So we have our junction here with our high pressure water pump. And what that'll do is that'll simulate more ice being added to the system to demonstrate for you the ice capabilities of our regulator. Our regulator is just like any other Equilibar Research Series regulator, it has a reference port, an inlet port, and an outlet port. The reference is typically piloted by a nitrogen source, although you can use high pressure air or any sort of high pressure gas source. That's the way we typically ask you to pilot the regulator. And then the outlet, which we have several different options, which I'll outline at the end of this video. Now that I'm showing you the schematic, we're going to operate the back pressure regulator. I'm going to begin by charging our Haskell pump, which has a 25 to 1 ratio. So I'm piloting it at 80 PSI, which our back pressure regulator is piloted at around 2000. So now that I've given the supply to the Haskell pump, I'm going to open the flow and start flowing through the regulator. So now there's flow through the system. There's a DP across this flow controlling valve, which we talked about in the schematic. And you can actually smell the plant oil, in this case basil, being emitted from the processed fluid. We can see here that regardless of that the flow is interrupted, the back pressure still maintains fairly constant between 1910 and 1915 PSI. All right, so now that we've been operating a little while, what I want to do is show you how the ice is really stretching across this expanding orifice. You can really see how the regulator's flow hasn't really changed that much, as well as the precision is maintained very constant at that half a percent accuracy range. So now that this regulator is highlighting not freezing well with supercritical, what we're going to do is exacerbate the problem by adding some water to the system. The pressure is still staying relatively constant at that half a percent variance across the full scale range. 
So this really demonstrates the Equilibar's VPR technology with this BR1 pattern orifice. As we're pumping water through the system, you can hear the crackling of the ice as it forms and sheds away from that expanding orifice. The BR1 has several different outlet options that we'd like to summarize. This has heater cartridge ports and a thermocouple port, which you can monitor the temperature and actually heat the bottom of the regulator to make sure that there are absolutely no ice buildup in the outlet of the regulator. Lastly, we have an annular ring here, which is the outlet area for capturing that ice and carbon dioxide gas. This is common for all different connection ports, so you'll see this elsewhere. This particular technology is just like the previous one, but it doesn't have any of those features. Instead, it has a simple quarter-inch tube stub outlet. And lastly, you can have a flange connection, which we can weld or bolt on, and you can take this flange and bolt it to a collection tank. That concludes our supercritical extraction video. If you'd like to learn more, we encourage you to go to Aquilabra.com or give us a call at 828 650-6590. We'll have one of our application engineers tell you a little bit more about the product.